Hi, in this video, I'll talk about antigen presenting cells or APCs. First, we'll talk about the types of antigen presenting cell. Then we will move on to look at their development inside the bone marrow. And then finally, we'll talk about the functions of the antigen presenting cells and their significance in terms of the immune response. Now, we can consider the immune system of our body to be a defense system of our country. Now, if these two are similar, then the antigen presenting cells are very similar to the patrolling police officer. Why is so? We would know in a moment. And we would always compare our immune situations with the defense crisis. And that would help us to understand these concepts in a better way. So let's introduce our antigen presenting cells. They are dendritic cell, macrophage, B cells. Now, all of these cells. Has something common. All of them display antigens on class 2 MHC molecules. Now let's talk about their development a little bit. So inside the bone marrow, all these APCs are born. Now inside the bone marrow, there is lymphoid progenitor cells. From the lymphoid progenitor, in subsequent step, the B cells would be produced. Now B cells, when leave the bone marrow, they are still immature. But they eventually leave, in, leave the bone marrow and go to the bloodstream from where they migrate to the peripheral lymph node and there they become mature and they start engulfing pathogen and displaying their antigens on their MHC molecules. Second, we should talk about dendritic cells. Dendritic cells can be derived from lymphoid progenitor, but nowadays there is a debate that myeloid progenitor can also give rise to dendritic cells. The third type is macrophage. Now macrophage is not directly produced from the bone marrow but myeloid progenitor give rise to monocytes. Monocytes are secreted into the bloodstream. Now these monocytes when enter the tissue space they differentiate into the macrophages. So now we understand how macrophage, dendritic cell and B cell develops from the bone marrow. Now let's take a common example to understand the function better let's say you are jogging in the morning and suddenly you you got your leg pricked in a rusty nail and along with this rusty nail a lot of pathogen entered uh, your body and these pathogens could be harmful for your body right so first of all let's see how our body reacts and how this apc react now our patrolling police officers which are the macrophages which are always patrolling near the physical barriers, they would understand that something is wrong. There is some pathogen. And the way they understand it is by the pathogen recognition receptors or the toll-like receptors, etc. Dendritic cells have the toll-like receptors as well. They can also detect the invasion of some foreign substances. Now, once they detect the invasion of the foreign substances, out of many things, one of the things that they would do is secrete cytokines. And these cytokines are alarming signals which would bring more and more macrophages and dendritic cells to the site of the injury, such that they can combat the situation for backup. You can imagine the situation that the cops are calling for backup, right? So this situation is very similar when a terrorist invades a border. Now, our defense system or our armies are not always deployed into the border, right? But the patrolling police officers always patrol the border. And once patrolling, they would understand that something has gone wrong. They would find some empty shells of bullet and some magazines. So they would first think, okay, they might encounter a terrorist. So they would first try to encounter, they would call for backup, and they would always understand that now the enemies could be very strong. So we should uh, uh, talk to our higher authority. Dendritic cells do the same. Dendritic cells have the pathogen recognition receptor by which it can understand what kind of pathogen has entered our body. Then it would try to engulf the pathogen by its long dendrite-like processes. After it engulfs the pathogen, it would degrade the pathogen inside that. And some part of these pathogen or some part of these pathogen would be displayed onto the class 2 MHC molecules on the surface of the dendritic cell. And 
Now, once they start displaying the pathogen derived antigen on its surface, it is the time for the dendritic cell to report this situation, report, uh, report about this hostile environment to the lymph node, to the T and B cells, which are the reserve army branch of the body. So they would then and there migrate towards the lymph node. Now, lymph node has specific subdivisions. Subdivisions where T cells and B cells reside. You can imagine them to be an army barrack. So inside the army base, there are separate army barracks for separate army division officers, right? So this is pretty similar. The cop which found that something has happened wrong into the border, he then and there moved to the army base and where he informed about the hostile environment to the higher army officials. Our dendritic cells did the same thing. Dendritic cells move inside the lymph node. They go to the paracortex where T cell resides. They interact with the T cell, activate the T cell. Further, the T cell can activate the B cell. Now, B cell, once get activated, they quickly differentiate into pl plasma cells, which are antibody secreting plasma cells. Some of these plasma cells immediately leave the lymph node and try to combat the situation. They are like the quick action force. Now, some of these B cells would also proliferate and they would increase their number. So this can be thought about uh, the army, which is a reserve branch of that. Eventually, they can also have the capability to be differentiated into antibody secreting plasma cells. And these antibody which these plasma cells are secreting are against that pathogen, which can potentially neutralize the pathogen. So we learned that the T cell with its T cell receptor interacts with the MHC bound peptide. And the signal derived from the dendritic cell and the cytokines derived from the dendritic cell eventually activate the T cell. Once the T cell is activated, it also activates the B cell and B cell differentiates into pl antibody secreting plasma cells. And since these antibodies are against the pathogen derived antigen, so these antibodies could neutralize the response in the periphery. In short, these antigen presenting cells, that means the dendritic cell, is able to make a connection between all these army divisions. And that is how they serve as an important bridge between innate and the adaptive immune system. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And please leave your comment below because it takes a lot of effort to make these kind of videos. Do let me know how you like my video or you have any specific suggestion. Your feedback can make the contents even more better. Thank you.